Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Construction Project Management Tips. In today's session, we're going to be doing a little bit of a thought experiment. I've been getting a lot of questions from my students. As you know, I'm a professor of construction management. And I get a lot of YouTube questions as well. And I think that people often have trouble visualizing how to manage projects and some of the advantages that software provides like MS Project, but some of the disadvantages too and how you have to kind of change the way that you think about scheduling and planning. And they're two distinct things. So today what I thought I would do is I would demonstrate on Microsoft Project a little bit of a thought experiment about if you're a student and you're taking a two-year program how that can be thought of as like a major goal and a major project undertaking that you're doing and how you should be able to think about things in the long term and then the short term and then I want to spin back and relate it to construction projects and the way that we have to think. It'll be something that I'll unpack a little bit more in the coming weeks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch us over to Microsoft Project and we're going to dive into that. We're here now in the Microsoft Project screen. And the thought experiment that I wanted you to think about, and if you've ever been a student in any kind of university degree program or college diploma program, you'll get a good sense of what I'm talking about here. You have, let's say, an overarching goal that you want to achieve a construction technician diploma. And so that's your overarching goal. And so with that, you have this diploma and we've got a work breakdown structure listed here. So I'm just going to pop up under the view. I'm going to go to outline and I'm going to look at we're in level one right now. I'm going to look at level two. So level two is perhaps it's a two year program, right? So it's going to take you two years to complete. And so that would be, say, four semesters as an example. Now, I haven't gone into the real detail of getting exactly dates and holidays, but I think you'll get the idea here. So if it's a two year program, then you're thinking about taking this and you know you got to commit to it over a two year period. So then the next thing is, well, all right, so I have to commit to this, but how do colleges and universities typically work? Well, they work by a semestered system. And so when you're thinking about a semestered system, you think about then the next level, which is level three here, and then that's semesters. All right, so I've got this overarching program that I'm going to take. I've got year one and I've got year two. I've got semester one and semester two, uh, semester three and semester four. Now in a college program, typically it's very structured and very linear. Like a construction project, it's very structured and very linear. You've got to do this before this. You've got to put on the roof decking before you put on the roofing membrane. There may be some flexibility within there with certain things, but generally it's pretty structured. All right, so then the next thing that you should be thinking about, so this is our kind of work breakdown structure here. You should be thinking about, okay, um, what courses would I have to take in semester one? And I didn't bother to type these ones in, but you would have more courses here in semester one. And then, okay, well, when I finish semester one, what courses would I need to take in semester two? And of course, uh, that would go and so on and so on, semester three and semester four. Now, just like I've been saying uh, with our um, overall project, Microsoft project scheduling, you know, you got to link everything, you got to be uh, making sure there's no open ends, that everything is connected, and that forms part and parcel of your process. And in this case, you could think about it that, well, to start semester two, I have to have completed semester one, right? And so if I fail a course, that could potentially put me back because there could be a number of courses that have prerequisites that would prevent me from going forward. At the very least, it might mean that I have to take an extra course in this semester or in that semester to make up for it. But each, each semester is flowing kind of like this waterfall example. So you do this and then basically you finish. So that means you can start here and then you've got a waterfall. Real project management, we wouldn't want to have a sort of um, finish milestone and then a start milestone. We would just 
pick one and go with that. But just for clarity's purposes, I put, you know, ones to finish and ones to start. And the other thing is with this, when we think about it, um, we think about that we've got this, this rolling aspect. Well, like I said, we have to complete these. So we would probably want to look at this and say, um, show me the critical activities. And of course, in order to reach our project goal in this particular case, because everything is structured in a semester basis, uh, they're all showing as critical, meaning that we have to complete them in order to finish our project if this is where we want to finish them. Now, normally the critical path is the longest path through the network, and this is kind of simplified, but it is giving you sort of a sense that, all right, I've broken this down basically by year. I've got the diploma. This is what I'm striving for. And then individually, this is what I need to do uh, semester by semester. Now, where it falls down, and this is the thought experiment that I'm trying to um, explain, where it falls down is it's very difficult to know exactly where you're going to be in semester four. Like you will know which courses, right? And if you're doing a building, you're going to know you're going to be doing things like commissioning and finishes and millwork towards the end of the project, right? Um, and towards the beginning, you know, depending on what the project is, you know that you're going to be, if we're talking the actual construction work, you know, laying out, setting up to excavate, doing substructure work, you'll know that. But Later in, in the actual project, you won't necessarily know. If we take this estimating course, you won't know what you're going to be doing week to week. You won't necessarily know what that estimating teacher has as far as detailed assignments, what the midterm exam is going to cover, what the final exam is going to cover and not cover. You won't know that till you get closer to it. So this is our long-term thinking to lay this out. And of course, then that we know we've got to commit a good part of our life to achieving this overarching goal of reaching a diploma and that we've got to set aside time for this. So we, we, have, to we have to plan this out, what we have to do and time frames and this is going to tie in you know on your personal life and on your finances and on work and all of these things that has to go into the planning and the scheduling you know what in this case you you've got not a bad idea of high level scheduling and so in construction we should have a pretty good idea of milestone dates that we're working out and we're striving to meet this is going to be much more rigid but in a project we would definitely want to be able to plan out at a high enough level that we believe we can meet these certain milestone dates. Like here, you've got a milestone of the completion of the first semester. Now, if we look at this and you've registered in this construction technician diploma and you indeed start semester one, you know what, on your first day, Every teacher that you go to class during that first week, let's say, is giving you a course outline. And in that course outline, there's details. And so this is a little bit long, this whole semester here, this four months here. And so really what you would want to do is you would want to break that up. So I'm just going to insert a task to demonstrate some of the things that you might want to think about here. So maybe I'm going to say math, 101, second half, right? Second half semester. And then maybe I'll just add here, Math 101, first half semester. And so I'm going to put in here predecessors. So I'm going to say here we've got number five and number four. Right, so I just put that at the end there. And you know how they were 100 days in total. I'm just gonna make this 50 days and 50 days. And of course, we don't wanna have an open end. We wanna complete this in this semester because you know we wanna make sure that that's clear that we've gotta successfully complete this. 
I don't necessarily have to have, what do we got here? We've got number seven, we got um, six and five. So I'm gonna basically put here, I'm gonna type in here, cause I think when I, I redid it here, I lost that. So I'm gonna put number six comma, right? Six comma seven, eight, nine, 10. Uh, oh, five is at the end. Okay, so I see it there at the end because when we were doing stuff there. I'm going to get rid of the five because we don't need to double this up, that double link there. We need to have this one linked up and then it will, we're not creating redundancies in our schedule. Okay, so that makes sense. So I would likely want to do that for each one of my courses if I want to get a little bit more detailed with it and I'm in semester one. I don't necessarily need to do it for semester two yet. I could, because I kind of know the semester breaks and it's pretty standard, but in our projects, we probably really wouldn't want to get into that level of detail, because right now we want to get into this half. And so I would have that for all of them. And now I kind of, with the course outlines, when I started, I can look at that and I can kind of map out what's due when. Like I can see, all right, the teacher in this case wants to have their midterm test on week six instead of week seven. Uh, this teacher and they want to have the final exam in the second last week instead of the last. I would have that information because of the course outline. I've got more detail. Now, if I really want to look at the first half, I would also know when certain assignments are due, right? Maybe I've got to do a lab every week. Maybe I've got to do a quiz every week. That would be fine. So that's giving me still a little bit longer term look at how I want to achieve my diploma how I want to run my project. As I said, this is a thought experiment, just getting you to see how everyday things and everyday practices, if you build certain skills and habits around it, it'll be easier for you to achieve. So, and I think a lot of students don't do this. They kind of just do stuff and they, you know, they have to work and they don't really think about studying and they really don't think about exams that much until they're reacting to it. Oh my, my goodness, I've got a, a lab assignment due tonight or I've got a big, test tomorrow and I didn't study for it and all these kind of things. And so it's very reactive mode. If you want to be proactive. You kind of look at, okay, so what do I have in the next seven weeks? These are more major things. And that's still not detailed enough because it's still kind of like, especially the stuff that's like three, four, five, six, seven weeks away. That's pretty far. But the stuff that's in the next two weeks is closer and especially the stuff that's in the next week. So as long as we're setting ourselves up, like if we're seeing if there's something that's a long lead item, like a major project that's going to take us four weeks to, to do, well, then we should be backing it up from when it's due and make sure that we've scheduled ourselves that we're going to start that project four weeks before it's due, if that's what we feel the time is that it's going to take. And you can buffer that too and give yourself a little bit of extra time on that so that you're not too um, rushed on it. The other thing is we should really be sort of setting up separate to this, right? A time blocking schedule that's gonna sort of fill in all of your classroom times because you have certain classroom times that you have to be at class or you should be at class. And that's again, a lot of people miss classes. They have to work this and that, they double booked and all of these things. But if you have a time block plan, meaning you blocked in all of your classroom times and then you block in when you have to work, then you can sort of see what's left. And, you know, if you got family, you got kids, you can block in certain times for that. And then you can see what's left. And then you can block in certain times for studying and doing the work on a weekly basis. And that's going to build up certain habits that you're going to be able to follow, follow pretty closely. Now, if you find that when you block things in, there's no time left, well, then you know you've got a problem. Or is there things that I can cut out, things that I don't have to do? Or maybe you make a decision, you know what? It's okay if I don't get an A in this class, if I get a B or I get a C plus, as long as I'm able to pass the class, this is the amount of time I'm gonna take on it. And so you're taking something that, you can see what you're doing here, right? You're taking something that's very long and then you're starting to break it down, but you're only starting to break, I'm only doing this in the first semester and then I'm really breaking down the first seven weeks into much more detail. And I'm doing that in a separate 
schedule. Yeah, you could do it. In, you could basically do it in Google Calendar, the time blocking aspect of it, right? Uh, that's what I do typically for normal things that I have to do. On a project management basis in a construction project, you would break it down into a look ahead schedule or a make ready schedule. You might do a phase plan if you're using lean construction methodology. And that's the beauty of lean construction. It really gets you into that collaborative mode of developing the more short-term items. Well, in short-term, it can it's a relative thing, right? You've got your milestone, but then make ready is six weeks. Then you got your weekly, and then you got your daily huddles, your, your feedback mechanisms. And that's tying the short term to the long term. So I think, you know, if, if you're a student or you've been a student uh, or even you've done an apprenticeship in a particular trade, etc., you can kind of take this model and see how it actually flows to get you to your end goal. But to actually achieve stuff, you got to be able to do things in the trenches. And, you know, you've heard me for many years, uh, well, for on YouTube, just a few years, but I do like uh, the Eisenhower quote that plans are nothing but planning is everything. I'm recently taking a, a lean program uh, through AGC, uh, being trained on certain certain items. And uh, I like that aspect and it was repeated there. Basically, plans are nothing, planning is everything. And it's that this original plan it may be good for the milestones and to get your dates, like in this case for sure, and in our construction projects if we do it well. But the stuff that's going to be going on in between here, I don't need to detail out what I'm going to be doing in this course yet. Right? That's down the road. But I do know I'm going to have to do it and I do have something taking up that space so that I arrive at a realistic milestone and I can have an overall project duration that is possible, that is doable. But how I'm going to do it from there backwards down to here, then I can only look at so far ahead at a time. And as we get closer to the work, what do I got to do this semester? What do I have to do in the second seven weeks? And I'm not even getting into the second seven weeks so much yet, unless it's a course that says I've got a long assignment for the whole thing and I need to get part of it done halfway. Well, then I'm going to set up for it, but I'm going to focus in on what's coming up more short term. Seven weeks, one week, daily. And that's how you can tie together a scheduling software with short term schedules. And remember, we're planning things out and we're putting dates. When we put the dates, that's the scheduling aspect. But all this other detail of what we have to do and how we're going to fit it in, that's going to be our planning aspect. So I hope that's given you a little bit to, to think about because it's a thought experiment, right? It's a different... Sometimes if you look at something outside of your expertise, uh, and you can sort of visualize it. It helps you better visualize what's going on in your expertise. And anybody that does any kind of project management, but particularly construction project management, because it's very linear and it does require a lot of collaboration. Well, so does school a lot of times. You have a lot of collaboration meeting with groups. So I would be looking at, well, where's our group meeting times? And you'd want to get that in your time block planner to see that that actually works and that actually fits. So something to think about, something to reflect on. We're going to be jumping into more on these topics as we move through more project management uh, tips, techniques. And Microsoft Project, a good scheduling tool to get you visualizing things and thinking about things. But it's a tool. Really be thinking about your project when you're entering the information. It's not so much about clicking the buttons. It's about, is this... Is this helping me to visualize, to tell the story of what's going on? And where it's too long, then what's the best tool to use to look at it in a more visual, understandable way? And whether it's Google Calendar or whether it's basically post-it notes that you're using in a make ready um, schedule, whether you're doing a pull plan for like a milestone, um, there's a lot of different tools, techniques, methodologies, and we'll keep talking about them. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. 
Uh, I'm, if you have, please click the likes, uh, leave a comment, and click subscribe. Help build the construction community that we've been working on the last few years here. I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.